I have a little, I'm going to put this thing on Do Not Disturb. Yeah. Say your name and count to ten for me. Ron Crowder. One, two, three, four. And I had my telephone off on. Okay. Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the status of HIV and AIDS in Nashville. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about uh, the status of HIV and AIDS in Nashville, a longtime fighter of HIV and AIDS uh, in Nashville, uh, Mr. Ron Crowder. And many of you might recall that Mr. Crowder has been with us not only uh, on many other shows, but he also is the founder of a very, very important uh, anti-HIV AIDS organization called Street Works. And uh, Mr. Crowder, let me welcome you to the show this morning and to tell you how delighted we are to have you and to uh, tell you how glad we are to have you in this seat because it's been quite a number of months since we've had a good HIV AIDS show. And some folks are saying that uh, HIV and AIDS might be disappearing or whatever. So let's talk about uh, first about you and your background, and then by perhaps the uh, second segment, we'll get into the status of AIDS. But more than okay. anything, let's talk about Ron Crowder first. Okay, as you said, I'm Ron Crowder. I'm the founder and the CEO of Streetworks. Streetworks is a nonprofit agency that's been around for almost 20 years. We started in 97. Uh, we have three locations in Nashville. Two of them are located in public housing. Uh, the Casey Homes in East Nashville and Tony Sudicum Homes in South Nashville. We do free HIV testing. We do free hepatitis C testing. We provide uh, a multitude of uh, uh, direct support services for people living with HIV and people who are actively using uh, drugs. So we were in the name come because we work the streets. We work the streets a lot at night to prevent new infections of HIV and hepatitis C. We work the streets to 
uh, uh, interact with people who are actively using drugs and to try to do some type of intervention with them. And uh, if necessary, and if whenever they uh, get ready, we uh, uh, help them uh, uh, get into treatment. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, Mr. Crowder, we know uh, uh, you, and as we said, you were one of the uh, first uh, HIV AIDS persons that uh, we recall uh, being able to talk to about uh, that disease. And, and, and you, since that time, uh, not only have you grown the organization, but uh, you've uh, grown your influence uh, throughout this nation in terms of what uh, AIDS is and the status of AIDS. And uh, what we'd like to do today is to have you to give our audience as much information as you possibly can about the status of HIV and AIDS uh, in okay. American society in Nashville. And then uh, uh, we'll do, dedicate ourselves to that proposition okay. for the rest of the show. Okay. So right now, HIV and AIDS, we can see an end to AIDS now. An uh, end to AIDS is in sight now. We, uh, there are cities, particularly in New York, has a plan called End AIDS by 2020. So they actually have a plan of ending AIDS by 2020. Nashville doesn't have a, a plan yet, uh, but with all of the new uh, uh, interventions and the new treatments, we can see HIV and AIDS ending. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know what, I think when you first came to us, uh, Mr. Crowder, that was several years ago when mm -hmm. this was a real disease and people were all, still having all sentence. kinds of problems in reference to it. Uh, it's strange that you can now say that within the next four years, because I think at one time we thought that this would be something that would be with us forever and ever. But you mean that the technology and, and the, the drugs and et cetera have come to such a point that we can talk in, in a real sense and be serious about saying that uh, yes. four or five years from now we might see the last person to have be afflicted with this disease. Yeah, an end is in sight. I can't say that yeah, realistically I, five years is going to be the end of it, but we do know that the end is in sight. That it's now. not forever, as yes. we thought for at one time. Yes. Uh, right now, HIV is more of a chronic illness than a death sentence as it was. Like, I'm, I can't remember the first time I came on your show, mm -hmm. but I, I do know that the first time I came on the show. That was in the 90s. Yeah. HIV was still a death sentence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you got HIV, you, you was going to die. Yeah, with it. That's right. Now, they treat HIV as a chronic illness. And what they are doing is, if they can get the viral load to undetectable, mm -hmm. then your chances of transmitting the virus is slim and none. Mm -hmm. So a person who, who has a HIV in an undetectable viral load, mm -hmm. their chances of transmitting it to their sexual partner is slim and none. Okay, and so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our first commercial break, okay. and we're gonna be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. First time when we came, you came, and, and it was a terrible situation. Yeah, it was at that yeah. time, at that yeah. particular time. But we didn't think in turn. I think. Well, what has uh, the national government done in reference to this? Because I think that at one at one time the a government was given uh, 
various administrations played a significant role in terms of. Well, uh, the thing is that they got the Ryan White program. Okay. Uh huh. We're ready. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Mr. Ron Crowder and he's given us some information in reference to the uh, status of HIV and AIDS in uh, Nashville. And uh, Mr. Crowder, I would imagine when we talk about the status of HIV and uh, AIDS in Nashville, we can generally say the uh, same thing in reference to that if this is uh, current in Nashville, that this is probably the same Absolutely. situation Absolutely. everywhere. That's why we wanted to approach it from that perspective. Well, Nashville is a little unique in that Number one, we're in the South. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it's approximately 21,000 people living with HIV in the city. Mm -hmm. About 200 people get infected each year. Mm -hmm. While HIV in Nashville is down by 30, approximately 30%, mm -hmm. and it has been over the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. We still are the 22nd city, mm -hmm. number 22 mm -hmm. in the United States with the highest uh, HIV rate. Mm -hmm. And that's due to poverty, being in the South, lack of education, mm -hmm. lack of a pro uh, appropriate health care. That's a lot of many reasons. Mm -hmm. Drug use. And, and uh, drug use is a good segment uh, segue for what I need to say now. Mm -hmm. Right now, although... Uh, Needle exchange is not um, legal in uh, Nashville. Mm -hmm. We know that needle exchange reduce HIV rates in the injection uh, drug use population. Mm -hmm. So street works, you know, uh, we just have to be proactive on that on that front. So we do provide uh, sterile syringes for people mm -hmm. who are actively using. While we don't condone drug use, mm -hmm. we do know that they're going to use drugs whether they have clean needles or not. Uh -huh. So in order to reduce HIV infection rates, we provide uh, mm -hmm. sterile syringes for people who are actively using. But we also offer them information and try to help them mm -hmm. move to uh, get into drug treatment. Mm -hmm. And we so we do that. Also the same thing with hepatitis C. Hepatitis, we have probably 50 or 60 percent hepatitis C positivity rate in our testing. Mm -hmm. Now what do you mean when you say uh, F H I uh, HIV and uh, this you've got another disease that you, you, you hepatitis C. hepatitis C. Now what is that all about? Hepatitis C is a disease that affects the uh, liver. Uh -huh. So people would have like me. I had hepatitis C. Mm -hmm. The good thing about me and, the, and I'm just been blessed by the Lord. I was able to mm -hmm. uh, uh, stick around, or the Lord kept me living long enough mm -hmm. to see uh, uh, a medication that come through that was that people could tolerate. Mm -hmm. uh, ten, when I first came on the show, I had hepatitis C, but the only drug they had was interferon. Mm -hmm. And it was horrible. People would rather die than to take that mm -hmm. drug, and a lot of them did. Mm -hmm. But now they have a new drug on the market that clears hepatitis C mm -hmm. in 12 weeks, you take the pill for 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. Granted, I'm, 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 I'm still blessed because I'm a veteran, mm -hmm. but the pill cost, that 12, that 12 week supply of that drug cost $96,000. Mm -hmm. But because I'm a veteran, I no, was able, able to get it. Uh -huh. And most, a lot of people is able to get it too. One way or the yeah, other. Yeah, uh -huh. but, uh -huh. I, but there are still several people that that drug is out of range for them. Mm -hmm. But thank God that I, now I'm cured of, of, of uh, Hepatitis C. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of my friends died with hepatitis C because they had cirrhosis of the liver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also, the other thing is, uh, uh, and we, if we can get, and and people uh, talk to me about all the time. Aren't you promoting drug use? And I say, look, mm -hmm. no, we're not promoting drug use because we give away clean syringes. Mm -hmm. They're going to use drugs anyway. One way or the other. Uh -huh. Whether they have to use a sterile syringe uh -huh. or whether they share a syringe with somebody else, they're going to shoot the dope. Mm -hmm. And my job is to keep them healthy, 
long enough mm -hmm. that I can get them the help that they need mm -hmm. through drug treatment. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we do needless change. The other thing, the other, uh, and I, I was going to say, yeah, Nashville is uh, the 22nd, mm -hmm. number 22 in the country, the country. Uh -huh. for HIV infection. Mm -hmm. We have approximately, I said, yeah, 21,000 people. Mm -hmm. The other thing is what's the reason we can see uh, uh, the, end. the end of AIDS is because they have a uh, a new they have a new uh, intervention called PrEP, uh -huh. P R E P, mm -hmm. and that's pre exposure prophylaxis. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the morning after pill. So now, people in high risk situations. Mm -hmm. And it's particularly uh, men who have sex with men. Mm -hmm. They can take a, tr uh, a drug called Truvada, mm -hmm. and it will prevent them from getting HIV. Mm -hmm. Now, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. I'm not saying, hey, you know, go out and have unprotected sex, mm -hmm. or, or you know. But what I am saying is that undetected viral load. With with prep, mm -hmm. that's how, that's why we can see it now, mm -hmm. because people with undetectable viral load, which I am a person living with HIV and have been mm -hmm. since the eighties, mm -hmm. my viral load is undetectable, so the chances of me transmitting HIV to a sexual partner mm -hmm. is slim and none. none. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I say slim and none. They done done studies and there's been no zero conversion mm -hmm. among discordant couples. That means one positive, one, one negative mm -hmm. couple uh, with, with undetectable viral load. And it, it's, it's strange that on my way here today to mm -hmm. do this show, they was talking about organ donation mm -hmm. of people who are HIV positive. This is how we know HIV, mm -hmm. uh, the end of AIDS is near, uh -huh. because now HIV positive person can donate, donate. Uh -huh. an organ. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They can not only can they donate an organ, they, they are now receiving organ. Mm -hmm. Before they wouldn't even give, give a, the blood. I mean, not yeah. the blood, but a, they wouldn't even give a HIV positive uh -huh. person uh -huh. an organ because. Uh -huh. They were like, oh, he got HIV, he's going to die anyway. Mm -hmm. Why would we give him an organ? Mm -hmm. So, man, this, this is really some exciting times in the HIV AIDS world. Okay, and so what we're going to do, we're going to take this final commercial break, uh, Brother Carter. Okay. Uh, uh, Crowder. Crowder. And then we're going to, I know, uh, <laughs> Crowder. I know, I know. And, and then we're going to come back and we're going to have our final okay. segment. We'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. All of the conversations that we had with it, all you know, used to be moaning and groaning yeah, and rough yeah. and stood and yeah. telling people this and whatever and et cetera. And then you come in and announce today <laughs> that we're moving toward within the next few years. And, you know, I thought it was an eternal kind of thing. Yeah. It, it was. Yeah. It, it was, was then. At, yeah, it was. At that, at that time, time we, sure it was. The uh -huh. only hope was just try to live as long as we could, could. That's but. That's right. Uh -huh. but yeah, now, but now, yeah. Well, that, okay, okay. Okay. Thank you. Welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Mr. Ron Crowder, and he's given us some information in reference to the uh, status of HIV and AIDS in Nashville. And I think I must say up front, uh, Mr. Crowder, that uh, the information that you have reported today is very, very positive and uh, well hoped for information because I can remember when uh, <clears throat> you came to me and, and dealing with the same kind of situation and it was moaning and groaning, not only in reference to what happened in Nashville, but all oh, over the world yes, in a real yes. sense. And now you're telling us that there's a possibility that we might see the end of AIDS within the next half century, I mean, uh, half decade or so. Yes. Go on, talk about yes. it. For me, for yeah, me. Dr. Haney, you're right. You're absolutely right. We're very optimistic that the end of AIDS will occur 
within the next five to 10 years. Mm -hmm. We're very optimistic. Uh, that's not to say that people still shouldn't take the same precautions as they, as, they t as they have taken before. Mm -hmm. While all of while the optimism is is good, there are some things that I'm gonna tell you that's that's not so good. good. Mm -hmm. For example, HIV is still disproportionately uh, affects people of color. Mm -hmm. People of color who gets who get HIV seem to get sicker, mm -hmm. get sicker quicker, mm -hmm. and they die sooner. Mm -hmm. Now. Amongst men who have sex with men, the uh, infection rate is out the roof. Mm -hmm. I mean, the CDC has has uh, uh, gave given statistics mm -hmm. that says one in two. Mm -hmm. That's fifty percent, man. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Of of men who have particularly African American men. Mm -hmm. This is African American men. Young mm -hmm. African American men will get, it, get uh, one and two will be infected mm -hmm. with HIV. Now, Nashville Cares, Nashville Cares Street Works and Neighborhood Health mm -hmm. received a grant from the CDC in the amount of three point eight million dollars mm -hmm. over the next five years to combat HIV in the young mm -hmm. MSM, the young black MSM mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what we plan to do with that grant is to create a one-stop shop mm -hmm. for MSMs where they can come and receive all of their services under one roof. Mm -hmm. So we are in a collaboration to make that happen. We've not yet solidified the space, mm -hmm. but we're in negotiate where well, Nashville Chaos is in negotiation mm -hmm. with uh, with the realtor now mm -hmm. to uh, secure the space. But we just started our second year of this grant and it's going mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, like I say, it's some exciting times now. The, the, the 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 federal government f finally got it right. Okay. Uh -huh. And now they uh, putting their resources uh -huh. uh, to follow the epidemic. Uh -huh. So the epidemic is the, the the greatest need is in young black MSM. So and that's where they're putting their money. MSM. What do you men who have sex with men? men. Is that oh MSM? Men, that's that's yes. The, uh, men who have sex with men. Uh huh. Now some people think that's a derogatory term. And uh huh. You know, uh, I was at, <laughs> I was at, I just left a conference in uh, Florida, the United States Conference on AIDS, mm -hmm. and they was using uh, gay and th that other word we used to use a long time ago. I think those words are, mm -hmm. are derogatory, queer, gay, and mm -hmm. all of that, but mm -hmm. apparently in other cities, they think MSM is derogatory. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, and, and but, but but it's but it's a matter of uh, how, what you call it. Yeah. But in, in in a real sense, the disease itself, yeah, it, 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 it has been mitigated uh, yeah. in a real sense to such a point that uh, uh, it, it 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 is possible to think about the end. of oh, yes. HIV yes, and yes. AIDS. We see it. In, it's uh -huh. in sight. It's uh -huh. really in sight. Yeah. Well, that's. Uh, that's one of the most encouraging things that I've heard about yeah. it. I didn't know that. You know, yeah. I think it's been a long time since we had a chance to talk to you about it. Yeah. But uh, the very, very thought of being a, being able to end it, and this is not only for Nashville. We're this talking is about as, uh, yes. all over the world. You Absolutely. See? And I understand it has been a, a tremendous problem in some parts of uh, of Africa, for example. And, yes. And, and yes. other parts of, of the world. Yeah. Now, I, you know, third world countries and, and places like Africa and things, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they're going to be on land with it ending uh -huh. like that. But whatever happens here, I'm sure we'll be, it'll, it'll, it'll eventually, eventually get there uh -huh. too. Uh -huh. Because now you still have mothers breastfeeding and, you know, they just don't have the, the, the resources that uh -huh. we have. Uh -huh. So, but eventually it'll get yeah, there. Uh -huh. Yeah, we, we uh, Nashville is doing some excellent work around uh, prevention, mm -hmm. around uh, 
EIS, which is Early Intervention Services, finding mm -hmm. people who are, are newly, who have HIV and don't know it. So we aggressively mm -hmm. look for those people because probably, I don't know the percentage right off the top of my head, but most of all new infections occur mm -hmm. amongst people who have HIV and mm -hmm. don't know that they have mm -hmm. it. So the, the key to ending HIV also lies in finding those people mm -hmm. who are HIV positive and don't know that they are HIV, HIV positive. Mm -hmm. Also, finding the people who are HIV positive for whatever reason mm -hmm. who has fallen through the cracks. Okay. So what we need to do is find all of those people, get them into treatment, get them treated mm -hmm. where their viral load will be undetected and they won't be uh, at risk of transmitting the virus mm -hmm. to other people. And so that's what we're trying to and do. And then you can say that you've defeated uh, HIV and absolutely. AIDS. Uh -huh. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and I tell you, this is a real optimistic report for me to hear because everything good, that we've said good. up until this point has always been doom and gloom yes. in reference to it. And are you sure that a lot of folks understand that? Because I think that there are a large... Well, group. it's still people because just like you didn't know, mm -hmm. imagine how many other people don't know. Mm -hmm. Imagine how, man, we if still got people stuck. If you don't have in contact yeah. and know about the yeah. disease and discuss it, and et cetera, there's no way that you might know it. And you might have some information from long back, yeah. and that information no longer applies. Yeah. Is that, uh, that is correct. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good statement. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is now, early detection mm -hmm. and early treatment. Mm -hmm. The sooner we can get them detected, as soon as we can detect the disease, mm -hmm. the sooner we can get them into a treatment, that's the key. Mm -hmm. That is the key to ending this epidemic. Well, uh, Mr. Crowder, let me say, uh, we've got about a minute and a half to go uh, mm -hmm. here. And I can say one thing, that uh, the way you've been working with it and the, the efforts on the part of your organization, Streetworks, I think we can say that uh, in Nashville, I'm not sure about what it, does, it means in other places, but in Nashville, I think that you played a very significant role in helping uh, to move people toward uh, where we stand now. You and Nashville Cares and a couple of other organizations mm -hmm. uh, uh, Miss Morley's organization and the mm. women's w women with AIDS and, and the first response uh, center. Okay, uh -huh. Reverend Ed Sanders. Ed Sanders, yeah, certainly. And I think that all of you played such a, an excellent role in terms of not only making us aware of it.